In order to make ChatGPT safer, workers in Kenya labeled disturbing content, including graphic descriptions of violence and rape. Their pay? Less than 2 euros per hour. Effective AI models like ChatGPT or DALI often rely on an invisible human workforce in the global south that clean up the training data sets. Why is data labeling so important and whose job is it? The performance of an artificial intelligence depends on its training data, whether it's an autonomous robot vacuum or a generative AI that creates a poem or a picture based on a text prompt. To create a good data set, labeling the data is essential. And this task is still mostly done by humans. By labeling the training data, humans tell the robot vacuum where it should vacuum and when to stop. In case of a generative AI, humans decide and label what kind of content is offensive. ChatGPT and other generative models are not magic and they rely on massive supply chains of human labor. Lots of companies outsource the tedious data labeling process, mostly to countries in the global south, such as India, Venezuela or Kenya. The global market for data annotation is estimated at more than 2 billion euros in 2023. Hiring contractors in other countries comes with some risks. Big companies are not responsible for the conditions the workers have to work in, contractors are. So, for example, limiting the exposure to disturbing content. The workers in Kenya complained about the lack of mental health care. On top of that, contractors have access to confident material. In Venezuela, data labelers shared highly personal pictures taken by robot vacuums on Facebook. One of them even showed a person on the toilet. Though the pictures were allowed to be used to train the next generation of robot vacuums, they should have never appeared online. OpenAI, the company that developed ChatGPT and the AI image generator DALI, is worth more than 26 billion euros. The workers in Kenya that helped make their product safer got paid less than 2 euros an hour. And that while exposing themselves to tons of disturbing material. Some started calling this AI colonialism. But looking for cheap labor is nothing new. In many industries, the dirty work is done by people from the global south. Thus, for experts like Tim Nidgebru from the Distributed AI Research Institute, it's clear supporting transnational worker organizing should be at the center of the fight for ethical AI. Did you know that behind most AIs are human laborers working in precarious conditions? And how do you think a fair treatment of these workers could be achieved? Let us know.